Hello. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use a GNSS receiver to create a known point anywhere. You can then use that to create your own NTRIP server that is super accurate and does not rely on having internet access on site. Whether you're mapping for a drone or conducting precise surveys, this method ensures top-notch accuracy and reliability. So let's get started. First, let's talk about why you might choose OPUS over other methods like NTRIP. OPUS provides centimeter level accuracy by post-processing GNSS data against the National Spatial Reference System. This is critical when precision matters like long-term monitoring or repeated surveys. Another major advantage is that OPUS works offline. Unlike NTRIP, which depends on a stable internet connection, OPUS processes raw GNSS data independently. This makes it perfect for remote areas where internet access is unreliable or unavailable. Once you have the coordinates of your known point, you can place your GNSS receiver there on future visits, enter the information, and locally transmit RTK corrections without needing an internet connection or a nearby NTRIP server. Consistency is another big win. OPUS ties your coordinates to a stable reference frame, ensuring repeatability over time. NTRIP, on the other hand, can vary depending on the network conditions or reference station that you end up selecting. Now that you know why OPUS is a game changer, let's walk through how to use it with an MLID RS3. Step 1. Set up your base station. Connect to your base station and start the MLID Flow app and configure the logging settings. Since MLID has a preset specifically for OPUS, I'm going to use that for optimal results. Next, we'll also check the auto start and backup data functions. These features ensure that you're ready to go without worrying about manual errors, such as forgetting to start logging. With the base configured, set up the receiver at your point of interest. Place it on the location you've marked and make sure that it is directly over the point so that you can return to it in the future, on the assumption that you will be returning. If you set up auto recording as I did, then just turning the GNSS receiver on will start the recording process. If not, you may have to go into the app and push the record button. Leave it running for as long as you can. How accurate the results will be will depend on how long you leave the base station collecting data. For rapid static processing, collecting data for at least 15 minutes is necessary. For static processing, you need at least two hours of data. The longer the observation, the better the accuracy. Once you've gathered all the data, download it and move it onto a PC. I personally like to use MLID Studio to trim a few minutes off the start and end of the logs to remove any spurious data. Clean data leads to more reliable OPUS results. Now we're ready to have the log file processed, so let's head over to the OPUS website. Open up the observation file, which for us is the file with the extension that ends with an O. Select the receiver type, input the pole height, and choose the appropriate processing method. OPUS will take care of the rest. In about 15 minutes to a few hours, you'll receive an email with the solution. Review it carefully. Look for fields like OBS used, fixed AMB, and overall RMS. Ideally, 90% of your observations should be used, more than 50% of the ambiguities fixed, and the RMS should be less than 3 centimeters. If you run into issues, check the email from OPUS for details. Sometimes waiting 24 hours and resubmitting can resolve problems. Once you're happy with the results, you can take the coordinates provided by OPUS, enter those into your MLID receiver, and then turn it into an NTRIP base station. And that's how you create a known point using the MLID RS3 and OPUS. It's a reliable offline solution for achieving survey grade accuracy, even in remote locations. Before we close out, I did want to mention that there are alternatives to OPUS, depending on where you're located. There's the Canadian Spatial Reference System, Geoscience Australia, and also some commercial operations such as the one provided by Trimble. I'll provide links to these in the description of this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with others. 
drop your questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.